Well, hello there, and welcome back to another episode of Cocktails with Kira. My name is Kira, and I'm a whiskey loving Irish gal who's on a cocktail voyage of discovery. So hit that subscribe button, stick around, and we both just might learn something because if I can do it, you can do it. So in today's video, I'm going to be making and trying for the first time somewhat of a long lost favorite. Today, I'm going to be making a Clover Club. So yes, the Clover Club is somewhat of a long lost cocktail. And despite not being hugely popular nowadays, even though it's having a little bit of a resurgence, back in the day, it was the cocktail to be seen drinking. So just like with some of the other cocktails that we've looked at here on this series, I think it's really interesting to see how cocktails, much like fashion, can come in and out of style throughout the decades. So before we get into the interesting history of the rise and fall of the Clover Club cocktail, and I show you how I make it at home for the first time, I would like to take a second to tell you about Skillshare who have partnered with me on this segment of the video. So in case you didn't already know, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. So with Skillshare, you can explore new skills, develop on an existing interest, or just get lost in creativity and have some fun. Over the past few weeks, I've been taking one of the Skillshare courses on YouTube success with MKBHD, and it's so good. I'm learning from Marquette how to better optimize and improve my YouTube channel. And I'm actually picking up some really great tips that I'm already implementing into my channel, which I'm very excited about. I am definitely someone who always loves to be learning something new, challenging myself, trying something new. If you've seen me on Try Channel, you will probably know that. And that's why I think Skillshare is such a great resource if you're curious to learn something new, if you wanna set yourself a challenge or some goals that you can achieve, or if you're a little bit unsure of what's next and you just wanna dip your toe into something creative and fun. So with Skillshare, you can connect with fellow creatives and enter a community of encouragement and communication. And the great thing is the first 1000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of the Skillshare premium membership. And then after that, it is only about $10 a month. All right, so let's get into the history of a Clover Club. So as I already mentioned, back in its heyday, the Clover Club was the preferred drink of a pre-prohibition distinguished gentleman. The drink itself is actually named after a Philadelphia-based men's only club called the Clover Club. And the members of this Clover Club would meet regularly at the Bellevue Stratford Hotel from around the 1880s to the 1920s. Now it is uncertain what year exactly the Clover Club cocktail was invented, but it was at the club itself and it is said to be around the turn of the century. In the early days of its creation around the 20th century, the Clover Club cocktail was kind of limited to the club itself. It was kind of an inside thing, but it was when a bartender actually brought it to New York City that the cocktail became extremely popular at that time. And as I mentioned, at that time around the turn of the century, it was very much in fashion. It was the drink to be seen with for any distinguished gentleman. But by the 1950s, it had very much fallen out of favor. So whether it was because of its blush pink color or its ingredients but the drink began known as a ladies drink heaven forbid and obviously that made it a lot less popular with the males and I think it got a few kind of passe reviews from cocktail enthusiasts at the time one person even referred to it as being a drink for pansies which as you can imagine at the time was a death toll for its popularity among the males post 1950s the drink itself just kind of faded into obscurity and it wasn't actually until the rise of craft cocktail making again that this drink came back around and a lot of people feel like it was very much unjust that it faded into obscurity and that the drink itself deserves a resurgence. So now that I've given you the history of the Clover Club, let's get into its ingredients. So I haven't mentioned yet that the Clover Club is a gin based cocktail and I feel like gin cocktails don't get as much attention here on my channel. So I'm very excited to be revisiting a gin classic today. I'm gonna to be using some Irish gin for our Clover Club today. This is the Blackwater Small Batch Irish Gin. So the Clover Club is also an egg white cocktail. So we're going to be using a fresh egg white in it today. Now you can substitute this if you would rather use aquafaba or chickpea juice, just if you don't wanna use the egg white, but I'm gonna to stick to that today. So it's worth mentioning that 
the exact ingredients and ratios for a Clover Club cocktail actually do vary quite a bit. I was seeing some very, very different ones. Some were calling for vermouth or sweet vermouth, some were calling for grenadine, and some were calling for raspberry syrup. So I am going to work with what I have today, which is of course fresh raspberries for the garnish. I'm going to use some raspberry puree, which I know is not going to be the traditional, typical way that you could do it, but it's either this or grenadine, and I feel like this raspberry puree is going to be better suited than grenadine. And then our final ingredient for a clover club is some fresh lemon juice. So we have our raspberry puree, fresh raspberries, fresh eggs, fresh lemon juice, and some beautiful Irish gin. So a lot of fresh ingredients here. I'm hoping that the raspberry puree isn't overly sweet. I think I might have to bring the measurement of that back ever so slightly, just so it's not really sickly, but I think we're gonna be fine. So now that we have all of our ingredients ready, let's go ahead and make a clover club. All right, I think I'll kick things off by adding our raspberry puree. Oh my God, that's so sweet. Wow, it really reminds me of grenadine. I hope that's not too sweet for me. I'm gonna do a reserved 10 mils of our raspberry puree and then I will hope for the best. Oh, okay, so in we go. Now let's go ahead and do about 20 mils of fresh lemon juice. Sorry, oh my God, it's going everywhere. Great. This is the messiest lemon. Now let's go ahead and separate our egg white. Oh, I feel like I've been having good luck separating my egg whites recently. Hopefully I don't jinx myself. I think I'm getting better at this. Mm. Excellent, in with our egg white. Now let's not forget our gin. We are gonna do 50 mils of our beautiful Irish gin. In we go. And then I believe we're just throwing in a couple of raspberries. So I'm gonna start off by doing a quick dry shake just to let that egg emulsify and to start the foaming process. And then we can give it a shake with ice and really go to town on it. Now we're gonna go ahead and add in our ice and do a proper shake. Okay, so now we've got our ice in there. We're gonna do a proper shake and just get this as foamy as possible. Okay. Okay, that looks like it has a beautiful foamy head. So I'm going to chuck out the ice from this glass that's been chilling, and then we can go ahead and strain it in. I think I'm going to double strain this because I'm sure there are raspberry chunks floating around in it, and I don't want any of those in my drink. So let's go ahead and strain. Oh my God, that looks gorgeous, the color. Wow, it's like straining really slowly. Is that a problem? Okay, I'm gonna switch from the smaller sieve to the slightly bigger sieve that has bigger holes. So yes, that's making a lot of difference. <gasps> okay, perfect. So a bigger sieve is necessary for this. Wow, look at that head. Oh my God, she's beautiful. What a pretty cocktail. And I'm catching all the raspberry here. Oh my gosh, it looks so pretty already. I think we're gonna do three jazzy raspberries. I think you just rest it in the drink. Oh my God, she is bubbling over her, what a head. I'm really impressed. I have to say, visually, she's an absolute cutie. I'm so excited to try this. It looks beautiful. I'm expecting it to be light and fruity and sweet, but hopefully not too sweet, but there's only one way to find out. So if you will join me over on my cocktail drinking chair, let's try a Clover Club cocktail and see how she tastes. <laughs> Okay, so we are back in the cocktail drinking chair. I have my Clover Club right here. What a beautiful cocktail. It really deserves extra points for how pretty it looks. Okay, let's give it a try and see how it tastes. Cheers. Oh my goodness, that is delicious. I am shook, that is so good. Let me go again. That is quite possibly one of the tastiest gin cocktails I think I've ever tried. It is not overly sweet. I think pairing back the raspberry puree a little bit was probably a good idea. I recommend doing that if you're doing grenadine as well. The creaminess and foaminess of the egg is gorgeous. It's got that lovely mouthfeel that a whiskey sour has, an amaretto sour. This would be a stunning dessert cocktail. It is 
fab. I will definitely be ordering this in a fancy cocktail bar when we can make it back there soon. I'm so impressed. I have to give a special shout out to my patron, Daryl B, who recommended that I try a Clover Club. That recommendation has been sitting there for quite a few months. I did put it on the long finger, but Daryl, thank you. I'm so happy I tried this. So it's now that time in the video that I get to sit back, enjoy my cocktail and answer some questions from my Patreon community. So I have a question here from David and David asks, what's your favorite whiskey, Irish or otherwise? David, that is a fantastic question. It's kind of a tricky one, a go-to favorite that does bring to mind. And it's a Japanese whiskey by Nika. It's the Nika from the Barrel whiskey. It's my all-time favorite. I do have a lot of whiskeys that I really enjoy, but that one... Is, is probably my absolute favorite. So I hope you enjoyed seeing me make and enjoy a Clover Club for the first time. It is safe to say that I very much enjoyed it. I'm so happy I finally tried this cocktail. And if you do make a Clover Club on the regular, how do you make it? Because as I said, the various specs and ratios are very much differing online. So how do you make yours? Is there a way I can improve it? Can I stop myself from getting a couple of little raspberry seeds down the bottom? If you liked this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more easy cocktails that you can make at home, I will link a playlist up here. And if you have not already, then be sure to subscribe to my channel. I post new videos every single week and I would love to have you back for more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on my next one. Cheers!